guys? Back here working on the K1 attack. Um, so last video I talked about how some of the parts I couldn't, I wasn't really sure what to do, uh, basically because a lot of things weren't making any sense or I was missing parts or whatever. Well, I did find one of the parts that I needed. Um, turns out I had it the whole time. I was, I went through some of the parts and, uh, yeah, I need to unwrap this and see what's actually in there, but I'm fairly certain it's the part that uh, I needed for this rear like steering situation or, you know, basically what to do about the tie rod ends attaching to the hubs. So we're going to unwrap this and see if we can figure that out and then see what else we can get accomplished today. Okay, so it's a little bit, uh, might be a little bit confusing getting kind of turned around here, but basically this is the underside of the uh, that rear subframe, or I guess front subframe from the Honda Accord technically. Uh, on the rear, but this is that piece that um, they provided with me. You can kind of see how it's supposed to connect like this. Um, I need to find some bolts because they didn't provide me with any. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to find some, which good thing I have a whole bunch of bolts. I don't think I'm gonna have anything shiny, but we have something. Uh, so I gotta find some bolts here. And then they gave me these like, um, you know, all these little eyelet kind of things. And they gave me like some, some sort of like basically like tie rod extension kind of deals. I'm not entirely sure which direction they go. I think maybe like this, I don't know. In any case, we'll figure that out. They did give me, at least they gave me the bolts for these eyelets um, in any case. So I gotta find the bolts for this and then I can bolt those on and at least that piece will be on there. So I finally got this stupid thing in there. As per the usual K1 attack things, it didn't fit. I had to drill out all these fucking holes. I had to drill them out like way bigger than it. it wasn't just the powder coat. It was like the, it was welded on wrong. The holes were in the wrong spot. Something like that. Like it is way off. So it's in there now. So now I just need to get these uh, get these little ends on, and yeah, move on to something else, I guess. So of course, this side doesn't fit in there because why would it? The other side, for some reason, actually did fit right in there. So I don't know. Fucking ridiculous. All right, I was able to get that one in there without any grinding, thankfully. I just put a pry bar in there and just kind of pried down on it until I bent those just a tiny bit, and then I was able to slide it in there. So those pieces are attached. I also, uh, between doing that, I threw, I finally threw some black paint on these, uh, these floorboards that I had done since they've been a primer for a long time. So once those are dry, then I can actually put the pedals back in there and then, you know, have one more piece of the puzzle. So I got this uh, K-Swap header from my buddy. It's just like for, you know, EG, K, Integra, whatever. Um, and as far as I can tell, I think it's going to work. It's almost, you know, almost up against the head, but obviously it's touching right here. So I think I'm just going to notch this out here to make some clearance. Um, you know, obviously I talked about before, this is the thing, you know, the plan is it's going to be turboed, but uh, I figure, you know, I got a pretty good deal on this header, so I might... Uh, might run around with it uh, all motor just for a little bit, just to make sure everything's working before I turbo it. Who knows? I mean, I got it, so screw it. We'll use it for the moment. And if you're wondering why does it stick out this far, well, the body actually sits back that far. It sits way further back than where the actual tubing is. Um, so this shouldn't be a problem. And if it is, I can always cut it down or whatever and, you know, weld it to go a different direction. But from what I've seen is that they, the body sits so far back that it actually works out pretty well. All right, so cut that out. Now it clears, we got daylight in there, so that's good. This is gonna be really silly when I decide to uh, drive it with no body because uh, it's gonna look like it has a big old fucking tail out the back or something. <laughs> I got these spindles here. These are from a 2000 Accord V6. Um, the kit is actually saying that you're supposed to use from 1993 to 94 or 94 to 97 which those are all four lugs. So the kit sends you a adapter plate that's like this thick and it's four lug to five lug adapter, but it's really chintzy looking. I don't like it. Um, so I think a better op alternative is just run five lug already. So these um, supposedly are direct swap for the earlier model Accords to do a five lug conversion anyway. Um, everything mounts the same. So I'm gonna end up using these and then I'll end up having I believe these are five by one fourteen, and then the front is five by hundred. So it'll be a little bit different bolt pattern, but it won't really matter because I'm going to be running different size wheels in the rear as I am in the front anyway. So I think this will work out a lot better. But they're very, very rusty, and I got the forks here, and you can see this is rusty. So I'm going to be doing some electrolysis uh, rust removal today, 
Um, I'm gonna get it all hooked up and then I'll show you what I'm doing. So basically you gotta, you gotta have a tub uh, filled with water and then um, you can either use washing soda or baking soda. I've got baking soda. Supposedly this doesn't work quite as good, but I mean, I've done it in the past and it works fine. Now, as far as how much, um, it's just kind of up to you. I mean, I just try to get a decent amount in there. I don't know if there's really a specific amount uh, per se, but as long as there's some baking soda in there and it's a pretty good consistency, we're gonna fucking run it. All right, so I have it hooked up now. Basically, what, you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some copper wire and you're gonna wrap it around the part that you are um, trying to clean up. And then you run that to the negative lead and then you've got a piece of scrap metal, whatever you're gonna use. If you can find something that kind of goes all the way around it, it's better because basically you can kind of sort of see it now. I've got it running. You can see that little dust stuff. Basically that is trying to run, it's trying to make it over to here, but you have to um, have, you know, if you have something that's all the way around it, it's, it takes more rust out at different areas because if you're too far away, it won't make it that distance. So I'm gonna have to move this around a couple different times to try and get all of the rust out of there. But for the moment, it'll work to let it sit in here and it'll probably, it'll probably try to get some of this stuff on this side, hopefully. If it doesn't, we can move it around. But yeah, so, you know, you just copper wire to negative and then you're positive to whatever piece of scrap metal it is. And then you just hook up a battery charger um, on just a low amp charge and you just let it sit for a while. And eventually, you know, it'll, it'll get to the point where this will, it'll, you can see it's bubbling and stuff. It'll get to the point where it'll just be like all bubbles and just be like a film. You'll see it uh, probably pretty soon because this is a video. Won't take long. So let's get to it. So there's not too much to see yet, but this is this has been it's been about an hour. I actually moved the wire um, a little bit ago to a different spot to get a little bit better connection. But you can see like all of this, you know, dusty stuff. That's basically the rust is trying to move from here to here. Once it's like once we get pretty, you know, further into the procedure, you'll actually see like there will be a giant stream of just crap that'll be just going to it. Or at least that's what's happened on the other the other times I've done this. All right, so this is, uh, I left it overnight. Um, you can see all the rust has kind of gone off of this side, some of it over there. And a lot of that will probably flake off. It's definitely not working as good as it should, and I think it's just because of where this is placed, and I should probably get a cleaner piece of metal. Um, but I think for the moment, I'm going to shut it off, and then I'll run it again overnight and kind of flip it over. All right, here's another 12 hours or so. Let's see what this looks like. See most of the uh, most of the rust is gone. I think most of this crap is just kind of surfaced, and I think I could probably just wipe it off of there. Um, yeah, but it's it's looking pretty good. Here, I'll see how easy some of this wipes off of there. Look at that, shit just comes right off. So it's just crap just kind of on the surface. It's not even attached to anything. This bolt is still rusty because it didn't really have good connection. Yeah, let's see. Look at that. It's coming right out of there. No problem. Looking pretty good. I'm going to show you here. The rest of the rust just collects right here on the piece of scrap metal you don't care about, which is called the anode. All right, guys, got that fork all painted up. Here's the before and after. Look at that. It's pretty good. All right, so I got a whole bunch of parts. I got um, the outer tie right ends. I ordered a whole kit and I had like control arms and all this stuff. Well, it turns out that the, the company told me I could use 9093 or 94 to 97 uh, upper control arm spindles, yada, yada, yada. Well, it turns out I found out that 9093 and 94 to 97 are different. This from here to here is actually wider on 94 to 97. So you have to have 90 to 93 so I end up having to order these um, separate, but I've got the ball joints that I need. I've got, you know, the tie rod ends, uh, the lower control arms, they don't quite fit, but I think I can probably grind them down just a little bit. Cause it's, I mean, it's just barely not fitting. And I think it should work. And as far as I can tell, everything that I've been seeing is that it should work. Um, of course, uh, because why would it fit? Um, these control arms, even though they did slide in there, I went to tighten them down. I had one washer in here um, and it bottomed out and there's none of threads. So I fucked the, the threads all up on this side. So I ended up having to grab one of the nuts off of these control arms and 
use those. So I ended up using all of those nuts on both sides. And now I've got to get some more washers for over here. So it'll actually not run into that problem. You can actually see it right here. See how high that uh, non-threaded portion sticks up. This just bottoms out into that because the company, they didn't put enough spacer here. Don't know why, but that's, uh, that's what happened. All right, so I just kind of slammed this on here just for the moment. I've got, um, obviously, I, you know, I grinded this out to get this to go in there, um, which was, yeah, a pain in the ass. I don't really have the right bolt in here. That's kind of chilling. But, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to see, you know, if it was going to all line up. But, obviously, I'm missing a bunch of stuff. You know, I have a strut in there, so it's kind of hanging low. But you get the idea. Uh, once that gets all cleaned up, it's going to work. Obviously, I need to get – I got new ball joints I need to put in there. I need to order some new hubs, probably with some uh, – extended wheel studs once I figure out you know how long of studs I need to get plus I need to buy brakes so there's a bunch of things I need to do and buy and whatever okay so I went to the hardware store uh, got some more washers so I was able to tighten all this stuff up and then I got both of the lower control arms are now on I finished up grinding all this stuff um, it required a decent amount of grinding which is kind of unfortunate um, maybe I'll replace it with just some energy bushings in the future and Hopefully those fit, but these ones don't, so whatever. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, starting to really come together, guys. All right, so I got my hubs. Uh, I got them all torn apart. I got all the bearings out, ball joints are out, vacuum plates are out. If it was a huge pain in the ass, I, I didn't record any of it because it's a bunch of tedious just crap. <laughs> uh, what's interesting is, like, um, I, uh, I did an electrolysis bath on this one with, like, everything assembled before I even pulled it apart, and then that one I didn't. This one came apart so much easier. It was wild. Like, it just fucking, like, came apart, and that one was just like, nope. <laughs> Nothing wanted to come apart. So I should have just done it to both of them. But, I mean, obviously, it's going to, but I was mostly, I didn't have anything else to throw in the bath. So I was like, you know what? We'll just throw the whole thing in there. Um, but, yeah. So now that it's all apart, I can actually do them individually so I can actually get a really good um, cleaning on them, and then I can, you know, finish them up and paint them and whatever. But, yeah, we're going to do that. You guys, if you want to see this, this is... One of the spindles, this is after doing electrolysis, before paint. Literally all I've done since it's been out of electrolysis, I just wiped it off. I used a little bit of wire brush and a couple spots just to um, break free some of the stuff that was kind of loose just to get it to come off. And then just brake cleaned it and then just kind of wiped it down again and did some air, air on it. But I mean, you can see, you know, there's literally, I mean, there's no, there's no rust on it. I mean, there's a little bit of oxidation, but for the most part, there might be a little bit just to here in the edges which I could probably get a little bit more of that out. But for the most part, I mean, it's it's all gone. It's literally, it's pretty much ready for paint. So that's that's how good it does. Hey right, guys, here's all this stuff all done and painted. Those hubs turned out real nice. Oh yeah. I got a lot more to do. Obviously, I got all this crap. I got those backing plates. I actually got one of them in there right now, but... For the moment, that's pretty good progress. I still need to buy some new hubs, um, brakes, and all that stuff. I got the ball joints over there, obviously, but yeah, I mean, it's coming along. All right, guys, I think I'm going to end it there. Got uh, a lot uh, a lot accomplished, I feel like. I mean, it doesn't seem like it, and, you know, I, it's been a while since I did these videos, and it's because this electrolysis takes a long time. You know, it's, it's like I leave it, I let it sit overnight, and then I unplug it in the morning, and then, like, I come back, do it at night, because I'm like, I'm kind of... It'd probably be fine to leave it throughout the day, but I'm kind of worried just leaving it hooked up when I'm not here. But yeah, so I mean, it's it's been a couple weeks worth of dipping stuff and cleaning and dipping and all that stuff and then going through it. And obviously, you know, I'm still doing some more, but you know, it's worth it. Um, it saves a lot of money. I mean, I could have taken this stuff and had it, you know, sandblasted and powder coated and it would have looked great. Don't get me wrong, it would have. But at the same time, from my perspective, it's like, these are suspension parts. Nobody's going to see them. It's not like my exo set where everything's out in the open. This is going to be covered up by a body. So you're not going to see it. So, you know, it's, it's great. It's, it's coated. There's no more rust. So it's, you know, it should stand up for quite a while before it starts to rust again. Obviously shouldn't have any problems with it. Um, yeah, I need to order some parts uh, so I can finish putting these back together. And then I'd like, kind of like to see if I can figure out what's going on with the axle situation because the axles that they supposedly offer or Hasport did, as far as I can tell, they might not offer them anymore. So I'm kind of wondering what I'm going to do about that. There's, I've talked to, you know, I kind of looked around and I saw a few other people that had kind of talked about it. It's really few and far between. Like there's hardly anybody that's done 
K-swapped early model Accords, so it's really uncommon. Um, but what I did see is like one guy, he was saying he was using like a 06 to 11 SI um, axles. So that might be what I try. That and I kind of want to try like RSX Type S because I know they're not that much different and see if maybe they'll line up. I don't know. But I was saying you get these hubs together first. So that'll be kind of first thing you order is, you know, ordering those parts, put them together and then see what I can do. And I'm sure there's plenty of other things I got to do because, I mean, look at the car. There's tons of stuff to do. <laughs> But yeah, uh, until next time, uh, like, subscribe, do all the things, and peace out.